Okay, we're in uh, Tech Math 3 pre-calculus class doing section 13-2, which has to do with sum and differences of sines and cosines. So um, luckily the, the back cover of the book has these formulas in them, so it's nothing that we'll have to memorize. So the sine of theta plus phi and the cosine of theta plus phi. And we have uh, sine sine, sine cosine. Back cover, yeah. Cosine theta sine phi. And the uh, double cosine guy has a minus sign. Cosine cosine. Minus sine sine. And like I said, there's no good way to remember these things. Just know where they are in the book and use them when you have to. Um, we have a, a bunch of rules for even and oddness on page 454. So uh, the tangent function um, is uh, such that the, the tangent of minus theta is the same as minus the tangent of theta, which makes tangent odd, if anybody cares. And uh, the cotangent of minus theta is minus the cotangent of theta, which makes it odd. And uh, the secant of uh, minus theta is equal to the secant of theta, which makes it even, if I could spell secant, which I can't. All right, there we go. And the cosecant of uh, minus theta is minus the um, cosecant of theta, which makes it odd. So we have even functions. We have odd functions. The um, uh, uneven, an even function is even. I can spell even. <coughs> if f of minus x is equal to f of x. So that, that's what makes a function even. A function is odd if f of minus x were equal to minus f of x. So that's our definition of even odd. Yes? Question? Uh, this guy? Yeah, because the cosine function is e even, so the secant function has to be even, and because it's even, the secant of minus theta has to be the uh, secant of theta, right? Okay. And so um, if I look at the cosine curve, it does this, right? That's what it does, like that. So if I have, here's theta, there's minus theta, they're both positive. Here's theta, here's minus theta, they're both negative. So th this guy is a is a even function. Okay. Well, if I look at the sine function, what do I see? I see something that looks like this. Um, when theta there's theta that's equal to and here's minus theta. Well, at, at theta I'm positive, at minus theta I'm negative. So the sine of minus theta has to equal minus the sine of theta because one of them is positive and one of them is negative uh, going that way. So that's, you know, think about it graphically, that'd be okay too. Um, all right, now we got sine theta minus phi and cosine uh, theta minus phi. So we can either add or subtract these guys. And I got uh, sine cosine minus cosine sine minus so cosine sine. Huh? Same thing or different? This is different than the other one, yeah. 
and the cosine is cosine 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 plus sine sine and uh, Rumundo was wondering well was the other one different yeah see there's a plus sign and a minus sign here and now it's the other way around and yeah like I say there's no way um, to commit them to memory because they seem to be very random and then we, we can continue and we can go uh, the tangent of uh, theta plus phi and the tangent of uh, theta minus phi Again, when we use them, we're just going to go to the book and get them. We're not going to remember those guys. Okay, so now we're uh, proving identities again. Okay, so we're going to start with number two, and we're going to prove that the cosine of x plus 180 is equal to minus the cosine of x. Okay, so I need the I need the summation of cosine guys, so that'd be number thirteen, equation thirteen in the book. So um, cosine, this is going to be um, sine x cosine one eighty plus cosine x sine one eighty. Okay, and uh, that's supposed to be equal minus cosine as well. Um, it is? Yeah, it is. All right. So the, um, wow. Um, well, anyway, as I was saying, before I got interrupted by my chain of thought by writing down the wrong equation, this is number 13, not 12, the one I copied. So this is uh, cosine x cosine 180 minus sine x sine 180. On page 453. I'm on page 453, looking at equation 13 for cosine of x plus 180. And I'm writing it down. And then I'm saying, well, you know, the sine of 180 is 0. So this whole term is 0. Um, the cosine of 180 is minus 1. So all this is is minus 1 cosine x, and I am done. I've proved that the cosine of x plus 180 is minus the cosine of x. Could you repeat that a little louder? Because it minus the cosine x. <coughs> Which part? No, for the second part. Okay, so the answer is just negative cosine x. Yeah, negative cosine x right there. Okay. It's supposed to be negative cosine x, and I got oh, negative okay. cosine x. Yeah. Okay. It's called luck. Yeah, that was luck, yeah. What's the number 13 is the equation I'm using to oh. get the the added the cosine of, of theta plus phi. Okay, that's the equation I'm using in the book. Number two is the problem I'm working on. That's why it says number two here, and the equation guy is in parentheses there. It's a, a tricky thing, I know. All right, let's try uh, four. Well, I don't know about four. We'll do four anyway. The cosine of x plus two pi, and it's supposed to be Cosine x, that's what I'm trying to show. Okay, so this is is cosine x cosine 2 pi minus sine x sine 2 pi. We recognize 2 pi as 360 degrees, which is uh, 0 degrees, and we recognize the sine of 0 to be 0. So this whole term goes to 0. And then we recognize the cosine of 0, or 2 pi, or 360. This is going to be 1. So this whole thing comes down to cosine x, and I am done. That's all there is right no more. Well, that seems pretty pathetically easy. So maybe we ought to pick a harder one. Oh, 14? You like 14? Okay. We'll try 14. 
Okay, somebody wants 13, that's fine. We can do 13. We'll do both of them. We're supposed to show that the cosine of pi over 4 plus phi is the same as cosine phi, I guess that's theta, sine theta square root of 2. This is a theta. Yeah. Well, um, okay. So anyway, that, so that so the the guys that were in the real fraternity had to know the Greek alphabet, recite it backwards, all kinds of weird things, right? And my roommate and I, in our own fraternity, we didn't have any rules like that. So I might call it theta, I might call it phi, I might call it omega. You know, it's some Greek letter, and I don't. And uh, that's as close as I can get. Okay, well, back to this is cosine guy, right? So cosine, cosine, so that's going to be uh, cosine pi over 4, cosine theta, minus sine pi over 4, uh, sine theta. Is that what it is? Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, um, what's the cosine of 45 degrees? Um, square root of 2 over 2, right? So the square root of 2 over 2 cosine theta minus the sine of, of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. Okay, square root of 2 over 2 sine theta. All right, now I got, um, I got square root of 2 cosine theta minus the square root of 2 sine theta divided by 2. Okay, am I there yet? No, not there yet. All right, so now I'm going to go top and bottom, multiply by 1 over the square root of 2, 1 over the square root of 2. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, that guy goes away, that guy goes away, and I end up with cosine theta minus sine theta over 2 divided by the square root of 2. My ninth grade algebra instructor says I can't leave a radical in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply this by square root of 2 over the square root of 2, and I'm going to get cosine theta minus sine theta divided by um, 2 square root of 2 over 2. The 2's go away, and now I've got cosine theta minus sine theta divided by the square root of 2, and even though my ninth grade instructor told me I can't leave it there, that is what I was looking for, so I'm done. So all, all I do is just, I, I apply the, chap, the section of the book I am in to get the answer that I want, and then when I get that answer, everything's fine, and I better throw a theta in there just for the heck of it. All right, so now I got to do the same thing for 14. Ready? No, no not ready. This is where it's a, it's uh, having memorized the uh, the sines and cosines of um, of 0, 30, 45, 30, 60, and 90 in radian quantities is is a helpful thing to know. Okay, without knowing that then you're, you're stuck with uh, looking in the book, and I don't see it. So that would be unhelpful. All right, back to number 14. I have sine. Now they want me to look up something I haven't used yet. Theta, and I'm supposed to equal something. Square root of 3, cosine theta, plus sine theta, over 2. So that's what it's supposed to be. All right, so now I need the, the, the sine function, and uh, what does it say? It says um, this guy is the sine of pi over 3 times cosine theta plus the cosine of pi over 3 sine theta. Okay, and I, I recognize 
pi over 3 is 60 degrees. The sine of 63 degrees is square root 3 over 2. So that's square root 3 over 2 cosine theta. The cosine of 60 degrees I recognize as, as 1 half sine theta. Yeah, I know, totally boring. And then I, I'm going to have square root of 3 cosine theta plus sine theta divided by 2. And I'm pretty sure that's what I was looking for. Yep, that's what I was looking for. So it took it took more than one line, but um, that was good. All right, turn in the page. Um, how about uh, seventeen? Would that be a good one. Yes, seventeen. The tangent. The tangent of x plus 45 is supposed to be 1 plus tangent divided by 1 minus tangent. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, so I'm using equation 22 on a previous page. And I get the, the sum of the tangent guys okay. is going to be tangent x plus tangent 45 divided by 1 minus tangent x times tangent 45. Now what's the tangent of 45? 1. One. Yeah. one. All right. So this is. Um, uh, we'll write the other way. This is one plus tangent x minus one minus. And if the tangent of forty-five is one, then all I have left is tangent x. And boom, I'm done already. Boom. And I didn't even. I didn't even break a sweat on that one. Then they really did much. Didn't they? I know. It was really pathetic that I wasted so much paper. I know. Why did I? Good question. Okay, 22 is next. It's, it's also equally as pathetic. So 22, sine 4c, cosine c, minus cosine 4c, sine c. All right, well, uh, it looks like this is something in the form of something, right? So I go looking for the somethings. So I got a minus sign. So I, I see that this is this is equation 20. This is from equation 20, and it's sine of 4c minus c. And that's going to be the sine of 4c, cosine c, minus cosine times sine. So this is the whole thing is just going to be sine. 3c, and I'm done already. Okay, well that was that was Marvy. Let's do uh, 24 on the same page because they're not going to take very long. All right, so I got um, cosine 2 theta cosine theta minus sine. 2 theta sine theta. Right, so I wrote down the problem per correctly and I look again and I want uh, cosine cosine minus sine sine and that's going to be um, 13 again and that's going to be the cosine of 2 theta plus theta which will be the awesome cosine of 3 theta. Done again. Um, uh, 28, why not? Number 28, I got um, tangent theta minus tangent 2 theta divided by 1 plus tangent theta tangent 2 theta 
And I, t I turn the page one more time to protect the innocent. And I see that that is in the form. That's number 23. And I see that that's going to be the tangent of theta minus 2 theta, which is the tangent of minus theta. And I remember that the tangent function is odd, so that's just a minus the tangent of theta. The last step I don't necessarily have to do. I could have just left a tangent minus theta and been perfectly happy with that. Okay, so now is the bad news. The bad news is we're not going to go to 13.3 because it's not in the syllabus to do. So that means we're just going to do one more problem and go home. And we're going to get done before Enrique gets back. And then I'm going to, I'm going to put a whole lot of stuff on the board so that like it was really important. And you guys will yeah, sit yeah. there and look at it. And, think, and oh, we're not going to do that? We can, can do, do that. We can do that. Let's do that. All right. So I've got cosine A plus B cosine B plus sine a plus b sine b. Now we could expand this cosine guy and this sine guy and then multiply it out and have all kinds of, of weird stuff. We could do that. We could do that. And that would take forever. Or we could we could find the cosine cosine plus sine sine guy and find out that this is cosine a plus b minus b, and that's just cosine a. So the, the answer is cosine a, right? Okay, so everybody's happy with that? But Enrique is, Enrique is not back yet, right? So <laughs> cosine a b, cosine a b, that's going to be cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b times cosine b plus sine a plus b. So that's going to be sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b times sine b. Okay. All right. So th this is this is obviously sine a, right? Yes, it's obvious. Yeah, it's it's obviously that's sine a. So totally obvious. Okay. See you Monday, guys. Uh, don't forget to turn in your test. Turn in your quiz. Turn in your quiz. Oh, uh, you want to see the whole thing? Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's 32. 32. Yeah, 32. 32. Uh, is there a test Really? We made that problem especially for you. No, I know, but I mean, is that a problem? Yeah, it is. It is, but they added up your being such a. So they can tell you the quiz guy. Yes, I am already. I got a hundred. Yeah, 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 I got a hund